guys, Mr. Bagger here. This is part three of lesson 4.1. Still looking at radian and degree measures. One objective for this video, we're gonna use angles to model and solve real life problems. First thing we're looking at doing is finding an arc length. So an arc is just a portion of a circle. So not the whole circle, but just a piece of it. And as we're looking at this formula, this S value right there is gonna be our arc length. So in order to find the length of the arc, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this R value, which stands for the radius of our circle, times our central angle theta. Now, big thing about theta is it has to be measured in radians. So if we're given an angle in degrees, we'll have to first convert it over before we can do any work with this formula. If we take a look at the example down at the bottom of the page, it says we've got a circle with a radius of four inches. We're gonna find the length of the arc intercepted by a 240 degree angle. Now I do see that our angle is given to us in degrees. In order to use this formula, it's gotta be a radian angle, so we're gonna have to do a little conversion before we get started. Remember, in order to convert a degree angle into a radian angle, we multiply by pi over 180. If we look at doing a little reducing with the 240 and the 180, that's the same thing as 4 thirds, and then we've also got this pi on top with the 4. So 240 degrees is the same thing as 4 pi over 3. Now if we want to use that formula where it says S equals R times theta, all we have to do is plug in the information we have. We know the radius is 4 inches, we're going to multiply that by our angle, which we just found to be 4 pi over 3. Looking at multiplying these fractions together, on top, if we take four times four, that's 16 pi, and on bottom we end up with three. Now from here, we could take this and punch it into our calculator to get an actual measure. If we do that, we'd get about 16.76 inches if we round it off to two decimals. And we can use that arc length to figure out the speed of an object. So let's say we're looking at some particle or some object moving at a constant speed along a circular arc. To find its linear speed, we're gonna call that value V. What we would do is we would take the arc length divided by the time it takes for this object to span that arc, to go that distance. So we would take that S value that we just talked about on the last page and divide it by time T. We could also track how quickly that central angle theta is changing using this angular speed thing. This little script W is the Greek letter omega. So the way we figure out our angular speed is we take our central angle theta divided by time. And again, just like on the last page, that theta value has to be a radian measure. In this example, we're taking a look at a clock and we're focusing on the second hand of a clock. We're told it's 10.2 centimeters long. We're gonna find the linear speed of the very, very tip of the second hand as it passes all the way around the face of the clock. Now in order to find the linear speed, we need to first find the arc length. So in order to do that, remember we take r times theta. Well, the length of the second hand is gonna count as this radius in this example, so we're gonna use the 10.2. Now for that theta value, we have to keep in mind that our second hand is making one full rotation all the way around the clock. And remember, one full rotation in terms of radians is two pi. If we just take 10.2 times two, we get 20.4. And I'm just gonna leave pi as pi for right now. Now, using our linear speed formula, that's the one that said V equals S over T. Well, we just found our S value, it's 20.4 pi. As far as the time, well, in order for a second hand to make one full trip around a clock, it's gonna take us 60 seconds. We should include a couple of labels on here. Since we were measuring in centimeters, that means this length on top is in centimeters. I just said we were dealing in seconds on bottom. Now, if we go ahead and punch this into our calculator, 20.4 pi divided by 60, we get about 1.068 with a little rounding. We should include a label on there. This is gonna be centimeters per second. In this example, we're looking at a Ferris wheel that's got a 50 foot radius. It's gonna make one and a half revolutions per minute. The very first thing we're gonna do is figure out the linear speed. So that's our formula that goes V equals S over T. Now in order to use this formula, we have to first figure out what that S value is. So our arc length, remember we go R times theta. We were told earlier that our radius was 50 feet 
our theta comes from making those one and a half revolutions. If you think about that circle, one revolution is two pi, another half a revolution would be another pi, so all in all we've got three pi. Now if we multiply these together, we get an S value of 150 pi feet. So if we plug that into our formula over here, 150 pi feet over, well, our time is just one minute. Doing a little calculator work. If we take 150 times pi, we get 471.2 feet over one minute. So we could just say it's 471.2 feet per minute. Next thing we're going to find is our angular speed. So that's the one that goes omega equals theta over t. Well, earlier we talked about our theta value, that angle. It was one and a half revolution, so that's three pi. Again, our time is going to be one minute. Simplifying this down a little bit, well, three pi divided by one is still just three pi. If we put a label on here, this top thing was in radians, so it's going to be radians per minute. Last application for this video is going to be finding the area of a sector. So a sector of a circle is just a region bounded by two radii of the circle and their intercepted arc. So there's a picture down below that kind of shows it. It's like a slice of pie or a slice of pizza. So if we want to find the area of this sector, what we're going to do is we're going to take one half times the radius squared times the angle theta. And just like we've been doing this whole time, that theta value has to be in radians. So looking at this example, we've got a sprinkler on a golf course fairway. It's set to spray water over a distance of 70 feet, and it rotates through a 120 degree angle. We want to find how much of the fairway is watered by this sprinkler. So we're looking at this area formula that I wrote up at the top of the page, 1 half times the radius squared times theta. And we can actually start plugging in some of this information. We know the radius is going to be 70 feet. That's how far this water is spraying. So we're going to take 1 half times 70 squared. Now we do have to figure out what our angle theta is going to be. And remember, theta has to be in radians. Well, we're given an angle in degrees. So in order to convert that over, we'll take 120 times pi over 180. If we do a little reducing here, 120 over 180 is like 2 thirds. And we've got that pi, so 2 pi over 3. That'll be our angle. And now we're just going to multiply all this together, punch it into our calculator, let the calculator do all the work for us. When we do that, we get 5,131.27 square feet. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.